station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is station. We're ready for the event. Tri District Curriculum Consortium. This is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Houston ACR. We are reestablishing our connection. Please stand by. Station, this is the Tri-District Curriculum Consortium. How do you hear me? We've got you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. I'm hoping you heard those applause. My name is Seth Cohen. I'm the chairman of the NASA Downlink Committee. On behalf of Newton Andover and Green Hills, welcome. The excitement here is palpable, so without further ado, I'm going to turn it right over to my students. Hi, my name is Emily Weiss from Green Hill School, and I have a question for Commander Burbank. In space, is time read the same? How do you know what time to follow? Hi, Emily. It's good to talk with you. Um, in space, uh, we basically um, have a choice. We could pick any time zone we want all around the uh, the world, and we've actually got uh, control. Station uh, is operated based on, and uh, we've got uh, Munich, one of the control centers. That's uh, one hour from that. We've got Moscow, which is four hours ahead of that. We've got uh, SCUBA in Japan, uh, their control center. Uh, that, I think, is like nine hours ahead of Greenwich Mean Time. Houston, which is uh, NASA's uh, control center, I think is uh, six hours behind. But by convention, we, we use Greenwich Mean Time. We uh, basically um, have the computers and equipment synced uh, based on the, um, the uh, satellite navigation system, GPS. And um, it, works, uh, it works just fine for us. Thank you. Uh, hi there. Um, my name is Chris Patone. I'm from Andover Regional School District, Long Pond School, and I have a question for Flight Engineer Kuipers. Um, do you have a safe room in case you encounter debris or space junk that could damage the ISS? Well, Chris, actually we have, and it's called our Soyuz, um, so uh, if something comes very close, which is extremely rare, uh, then uh, we might uh, be asked to uh, to go to our Soyuz, our spacecraft. We have two, we have six crew, so three, three crew members per Soyuz, and that uh, can be considered as our safe haven uh, in, in such an occasion. Station, this is Houston ACR. We're reestablishing our pl client. Please stand by. Station copies, thanks.
Good morning. My name is Brianna. And this is International Murray, Space Station. I think we've got you back. Go ahead. All right. Good morning. My name is Brianna Murray, and I'm from Halstead Middle School in Newton. My question is for Commander Burbank. What was your most and least favorite moment about going into space? Brianna, if I had to pick um, a moment that was my most favorite, it would probably be launch. Um, and whether it was launching on a space shuttle, my previous two missions, or launching on a Soyuz, it was uh, it was a great ride all the way uphill. And uh, probably my least favorite moment, if I had to pick a moment again, would be returning uh, to Earth after the missions. It's uh, it's great being up here. The least favorite aspect in general is the time you have to spend away from family. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jordan Babiak from Green Hill School, and my question is for flight engineer Andre Kuypers. What happens if you are up there and someone somehow gets extremely sick? Is there a doctor on board? I understand that you have to be very healthy to go up into space, but there is also the possibility of getting sick as well. If you get sick, can you get treated, and are there doctors or trained health professionals? Well, that's a good uh, question. Uh, by accident, uh, more or less, I'm a doctor here on board, but of course I can get sick as well. Uh, so therefore, in every crew, there are uh, at least two uh, people trained to be crew medical officers. So that means that they know where all the equipment is to, uh, to uh, for example, uh, for example, uh, uh, resuscitate in, a, in an extreme case, uh, where all the medication is, they know how everything works. Uh, so in, the, in that sense, we always have to say doctors on board, be it uh, be it real medical doctors or trained crew medical officers. Thank you. Hi, my name is Alexandra Vandermoss. I'm from Andover, and this question is for Commander Burbank. Have you or will you ever participate in an EVA walk? If so, what was or is your task? Um, I, I did one spacewalk on uh, shuttle mission STS-115, and our job uh, during that mission in general was to install and outfit one of the large truss elements that's out on the port or left-hand side of the uh, the space station, and it includes one set of 240-foot-long uh, tip-to-tip uh, solar rays that help uh, collect the sun's energy. Good morning. This is Anthony Donatelli from Newton. My question is for flight engineer Kuypers. What was the moment when you knew you wanted to be an astronaut? Well, that moment was uh, pretty exact. It was when my grandmother gave me uh, three science fiction booklets. Uh, of a series, and uh, after that, um, well, I was uh, uh, I was only thinking of becoming uh, an astronaut. I was uh, dreaming of spacesuits, rockets, and uh, and other worlds, and uh, that's what sparked it. And later on, uh, I saw uh, the the big IMAX movies and the, the beautiful pictures taken from the shuttle, and then I thought it's not only adventures, also beautiful. And the third thing was that I saw that it was very useful for everybody, so it was a good combination. Good morning. My name is Andrew Costa. I'm from Green Township. Commander Burbank, how does the sun radiation affect you without the ozone layer above you? Have you ever had difficulties with solar flares in space station? How do they affect you? Well, the sun's radiation is kind of a mixed bag. In general, it's a, it's a very positive and helpful thing for us. So it, it gives us light. Um, the entire electromagnetic spectrum, for example, uh, if you look at it in the visible, it gives us light, and it's also light at the right frequencies that we can, with our solar rays and the electrical equipment we have here, uh, convert it to electricity to power all the experiments on station. Uh, it gives us heat and uh, for this to keep the systems warm. Um, on the radiation side of it, in the sense of um, 
atomic nuclei, for example, if you have, if the sun is very energetic and it and does what, uh, what we call a coronal mass ejection or a solar storm, these flares and things like that, uh, you'll have a wave of charged particles that, uh, that, will, that will strike the Earth's uh, magnetosphere. And people on planet Earth, when we're down there, are protected largely by the Earth's magnetosphere, but also by the Earth's atmosphere, including, um, including the upper regions of the atmosphere, which protect us from ultraviolet radiation. Here on station, for example, we get most of the uh, protection from radiation by the magnetosphere. So in general, it's not a problem. If it's a really big storm and the charged particles are directed right at station, there are things we can do. There's places on the station that are a little bit safer and better shielded than others. Um, in general, if we're going to do a spacewalk, we plan it so that we uh, minimize the risk for radiation. Um, for just the ultraviolet uh, radiation, for example, we've got some windows. Most of the windows on station protect us from uh, the adverse effects of ultraviolet radiation. But we do have a couple that are science-grade windows that if the sun were to shine directly through those onto us, the ultraviolet exposure... And... Good morning. My name is Brian Dower from Long Pond School in Andover. This question is for flight engineer Kuipers. What means of communication do you use most often to communicate with your families? Email, radio, or a downlink like this? Uh, most often, uh, I just uh, call them. Uh, we have uh, this uh, this internet telephone system, and that's very useful. It's uh, like calling from from uh, from uh, the telephone network from Houston, uh, in this case uh, to the to the Netherlands in Europe, uh, so that I can do uh, any moment that we have uh, contact with the satellite, which is not all the time, but uh, for a big part of the day, uh, I could call. Uh, anybody I, uh, I want. And then on uh, uh, additional to that, uh, once a week we have a, a video connection, which is very nice to see them uh, as well. Uh, and um, uh, yeah, that, that covers uh, all the, the contacts uh, with the family. And of course, an email. Yeah, I can do that as well. Thank you. Good morning. Um, my name is Tyler D. Hope from Halstead Middle School. Um, this is a question for Commander Burbeck. Um, what is the most remarkable thing or place you have seen from space? I think in general, if I could answer it this way, the most remarkable place I've seen from space is uh, planet Earth. And it is indescribably beautiful. And it's always changing and uh, you never get tired of it. You could be up here for half a year, and anytime you have a little bit of spare time, you wanna go to the cupola where we've got 360 degree windows to see the earth below you, you know, horizon to horizon for thousands of miles. Probably the most remarkable thing I've seen from space was on December 20th, and that was Comet Lovejoy. It was a, a sun grazer comet that came very, very close to the sun. It survived that, that close encounter, and it was a spectacular show uh, when you saw it from the vantage point of low Earth orbit. Thank you. Hello, my name is Carly Lefkin from Green Hill School. I have a question for flight engineer Kuipers. Do you think that the space training that you have received on Earth was an adequate preparation for what it is truly like on the ISS? And if so, what type of training that you completed on Earth has best prepared you for the actual experience? If not, what would you suggest to be included in the training procedure for future reference? Yeah, I think the training was uh, was excellent. Um, one thing is that you train a lot on things that uh, most likely are not going to happen, uh, like emergencies and things breaking down, which is a good thing because everything uh, works most of the time uh, as, as planned. Uh, and you do also things that you didn't really train for. Uh, that means that you need to know how to read the procedures and where to find uh, the, the equipment you need. So in that sense, uh, I think most of the training actually are don't need but you need it because if it happens you have
have to be uh, ready for it. Um, and uh, yeah, I think uh, for improvement-wise, um, uh, yeah, I, I like to to be more uh, trained maybe on uh, routine ops because, like I said, that's the routine things that you hardly train on ground, but that will happen every day because it's it's a routine, of course. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Ben Doherty from Halston Middle School. This question is for Commander Burbank. Which experiment is currently giving you the most interesting results? Well, first off, we got a lot of experiments, Ben. We, we have uh, well over 100 that we're going to do during our time on board Space Station here. If, you, if I looked at it from just the physical sciences, which is a large portion of what we do, some of the things that have, the experiments that have the most interesting, boy, that's funny, or aha moments, are the ones related to, uh, to fluid uh, mechanics right now. And, and one in particular, it's called the capillary flow exper uh, experiment. And uh, that basically looks at a very fundamental level of how fluids behave in microgravity. And it has a lot of importance for uh, fuel systems, propulsion systems, for water supply systems, for uh, thermal control systems, anything that runs on fluids. And it turns out there's a lot of cases where the models and the way people thought fluids behaved um, when they're when they're in, in very very small quarters or when they're uh, uh, in a in a narrow gap between say a vein and a in a in the side of a tank is a little bit different and in some cases quite a bit different than what was predicted on the ground. If I look at the life sciences stuff, some of the really ex interesting experiments or interesting results we're getting have to do with how to keep humans healthy long term in space. And one of those in particular, an integrated cardiovascular study, looks at you know head to feet um, everything that's going on in our cardiovascular system from the heart to the blood vessels and uh, we do a lot of ultrasound investigations on that a lot of it involves some of the exercises that we do and a lot of the jury's still out on that this is data that's being collected but we're getting some very interesting results out of it thank you hello my name is randy strubel from green township this question is for flight engineer kuipers what tests are a new robot, Robonaut 2, assigned on the space station, and what is it Canada I'm currently being used for? That's an interesting question. Uh, this is the, uh, the beginning of a new era with uh, robots uh, really now in uh, in space on board. Uh, and uh, well, of course, uh, the, one of the major tasks is, for example, the dangerous things, or uh, for example, routine things that uh, that uh, that cost a lot of crew time uh, and are are not too difficult for a, a, a robot. So these things, robot can can uh, can do perfectly. So the crew can. Uh, spend their time on uh, on the more uh, complex things that uh, that humans uh, still have to do. Uh, so I foresee uh, an interesting future which makes uh, the the work and life uh, more interesting even for the for the humans in space. Thank you. Uh, this is Madison Wells from Andover. <laughs> this is a question for Commander Burbank. What personal belongings is each crew member allowed to bring, and what did you bring? You can actually bring just a small amount of things up to Space Station. And the kind of things you typically bring, the things that I brought were uh, pictures of family and friends. Um, there were, um, you could bring books, you could bring, you know, a few things like that. A lot of the things that, that, that you want um, are, are kind of ways to, to maintain a connection to the, the people that you miss while you're up here. So in my case, I have uh, just a few knickknacks or a few odds and ends. Um, I've got uh, some cards uh, from my family, and uh, uh, I think that's probably pretty typical of what most, most folks will have. I have a, a few pieces of jewelry. I have my wife's uh, wedding uh, ring, for example, things like that. Thank you. Gentlemen, once again, from Green, Andover, and Newton, we wish you a marvelous adventure and a safe trip home. Thank you. And
And thank you all very much. It was great uh, talking with you today, and these are great questions, and we wish you all the very best. And if, um, and if you're interested and uh, the future um, uh, has, a, you know, has, has some interest for you in the space program, we'd love to have you because we need a lot of bright and talented uh, minds to carry us to the next stages beyond low Earth orbit. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event. Thank you, Tri-District Curriculum Consortium Station. We are now resuming normal operations, and we have a 20-second handover.